Well, this morning I'd like to spend just a few minutes with you exploring our passage from Proverbs. We've been doing a series called Proverbs for Life. And so I have the privilege of sharing with you for a few minutes on our passage from chapter 1, verses 20 to 33. I don't know about you, but in the age of the internet, where you're able to find out about what's happening around the world in sometimes the most remote places, literally minutes after something has happened, we are connected in a way that um, just 15 years ago, I think people would have found very difficult to believe. Uh, it, what now, the newest weapon, of course, is putting things on the internet. You want to defame people? You can do it to literally millions and millions and millions of people by something on the internet. And of course, with a population of over 7 billion human beings, the possibility for uh, inflaming, insulting, uh, et cetera, et cetera, or blessing uh, becomes uh, very powerful. So we live within that time, and I've been pondering a few things this week. Uh, one, of course, is uh, the um, putting on the internet uh, of an extremely terrible video that defames another religious group, Muslims in this case, uh, and the implication that it has around the world. And having been in places like Tahir Square, for example, and then you see uh, the burning of flags at the uh, consulate in Cairo, uh, the embassy in Cairo, the American embassy, or the killing of an ambassador in Libya, or the arrest of a 14-year-old mentally disabled girl charged with blasphemy because she's a Christian and threatened with the death sentence. I could go on and on and on. Of course, we live in a world where there's many types of injustice. And you, you begin to wonder, what happens now that these countries are getting nuclear weapons? And you combine that with some of the extremism, which just seems to be so prevalent in many places in our world. Uh, we need to pray for peace and for wisdom. And it raises the question of how then shall we live? How then shall we live? Do we live in a way that takes revenge for every perceived insult against our religious community or political group? Do we live as people of peace and of love? How then shall we live? And this morning I want to uh, share with you some wisdom from the book of Proverbs because that's exactly the questions that are being addressed here. You know, in 3,000 years, the book of Proverbs is probably written by Solomon and two others plus a collection of other uh, authors. Uh, scholars say probably most of it comes from the 10th century BC. So you're looking at wisdom literature uh, 3,000 years old, and yet the issues it addresses are still very prevalent today. The shooting on Danzig Street. What brings a person, you see, it's not just around the world in Pakistan or uh, Sudan or uh, Yemen or Cairo or Libya, it's here. What brings a person to get an illegal weapon to go to a street and then start shooting innocent people? What, how can you do that? Well, Proverbs has something to say about it. So, um, we have in the book of Proverbs something written probably about the 10th century BC, and uh, in ancient Israel there were three types of ways that people understood that God speaks to the community. The first is through the law, the book of the, the Torah, the five books of Moses in particular. Uh, the second is through prophets, and so you'd have people like Jeremiah and Isaiah, Hosea, Daniel, and so on, that God, through the Holy Spirit, worked through them and brought a specific message to the people at a specific time. The third way was understood to be godly wisdom. And I've seen this uh, function in a number of ways. When I was in Ethiopia, I happened to walk through, a, be in this particular village, and you kind of stumble on things on occasion, and I happened to stumble into what was called the judgment circle based on an Old Testament principle, which was where two people had a conflict, and these two guys really had a conflict. I, I couldn't understand what they were saying in America, but it was, they were yelling at each other and, and things like this, the universal symbol of love <laughs> uh, to each other. And um, the council of the elders was gathered round, and each one of them had an advocate, one of their friends who was literally grabbing them by the arm and keeping them apart, and then trying to make some sort of case for them. What would happen in this circle is that the 
gathered elders of the village would make a judgment based on the case that was brought before them by these two individuals, and both of them would have to accept it. This is the meeting of the elders at the gate, which Proverbs talks about here with the personification of wisdom, which is uh, we uh, uh, take advantage of the accumulated wisdom of those who have gone before us, godly wisdom, uh, much like scientists who have seldom developed something in isolation from what others have done before them. Uh, some scientists would say that their invention happens because they've stood on the shoulders of giants. In other words, what people have done before often leads to a new scientific discovery or uh, um, revelation. Uh, much like accumulated wisdom of the elders which comes down and then is applied. So in ancient Israel, the Torah, uh, the prophets, and then you had the wisdom of the elders, and the book of Proverbs is part of this. What's interesting, of course, is it's not just in Israel. If you were to look into um, uh, Egyptian uh, teaching, you'll find some really interesting collected uh, wisdom literature, and also Babylonia and Sumeria, just to name a few, that predates this. Uh, but what's wonderful here is that it's based in, this wisdom is based not just on personal experience, it's based in the fear of the Lord. In other words, knowing God and asking for the Holy Spirit to inspire you with wisdom is what gives you wisdom to speak to the particular issues of your day or your family. Now, I don't have time in just a few minutes this morning to take you through all of the truths in this passage, so I invite you to uh, read verses 20 to 33 and on through the 31 chapters of Proverbs at your leisure. Uh, I do this each morning. I read a psalm and I read a passage from uh, the book of Proverbs as well as my uh, regular lectionary because I found that the wisdom of the elders brought down to us can be very insightful for today. So what does this have to say to us? The wisdom is based in the fear of the Lord. In other words, our relationship with God informs the way that we look on the ethical issues of our time. It's the basis of our accumulated wisdom. How does this work? Would someone produce a video that defames other people? Let's take a very practical issue. The answer is no. Why not? Because those other people are created in the image of God and God loves them, and I am in relationship to my neighbors. And it does matter what I say about other people. My actions, as Proverbs remind us, do have implications. The fool's choices have implications. And when, when I saw portions of the video, I got, what fool made this? <laughs> if only they'd read Proverbs, probably wouldn't have been done. And then we have the reaction to it. Uncontrolled violence, killing innocent people, going after, in particular in Egypt, the Christian community, which gets blamed for someone's action done in the United States, uh, who's a fool. But the Christians inside Egypt get blamed for it. If you'd seen the posters that are advertising um, blame in the rallies in Cairo, it, it says Christians on it. The Christians in Egypt had nothing to do with this, but they're the ones who bear the blame and the responsibility. They're the ones who often I experience the prejudice as a result of someone else's action. So what's the response of Christians? Love. And Jesus reminds us to, to follow him is to pick up our cross. It is to forgive those and bless those who persecute you. The fear of the Lord motivates us not to revenge or anger, but calls us to pray for those who persecute us to pick up our cross, to follow Jesus, and to love those who would do violence against us. When everything else in us screams revenge, revenge, revenge. I, uh, underneath the article, I often read the uh, postings of people in regard to an article. You should have seen it. 15,000 postings. I didn't read them all. Uh, but as I wa work down the, 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 the anger and the vicious responses to the violence uh, perpetrated in Egypt and Libya, it was terrible. And I kept thinking to myself, how do we live? Do we live as a person encapsula uh, captured by violence and revenge and anger? Or do we choose to live as people who mirror Christ's call for forgiveness and love? And by the way, what I'm saying to you this morning is exactly what the Archbishop of Egypt, the Anglican Archbishop, called for 
which was love and forgiveness in the midst of persecution and violence. Proverbs has much to say to us. How do we avoid falling into the pitfalls? It is to follow the Lord and to love Him. And that's why it's so important that we gather together to worship together, to encourage one another in the study of Scripture, to do those Alpha courses or the Nehemiah or the Women's Bible Study, all these opportunities to learn more about His love because we need to know which way we are to live. We need to benefit from the accumulated wisdom of the Scriptures and of a wonderful teaching like Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Why? Because we know that we are held responsible for our actions. And ultimately, we will stand before the one who's going to ask us, Kim, what did you do with your life? What did you do with the gifts that I gave you, that I entrusted to you? Did you, were you a blessing or a curse? Were you someone who built up or someone who tore down? Were you someone who created violence and defamed others, or were you someone who stood for mercy and forgiveness? How then shall we live? 